Okay. All right. We're good to go. Hey, we just like to welcome everybody that watches this uh, video. This is the Utah 4-H fly fishing um, program or project that we have. And we are just putting it together. We're having different Zoom me meetings that we put on that will give you instruction on what to do uh, in the program. Um, we don't have any other people on the Zoom meeting other than the team, the fly fishing team, and we'll explain uh, kind of why that is. Um, and we'll instruct you on what to do on this video, and we'll give you a bunch of links uh, below when the video is live on YouTube uh, that will help you to understand what we're, what we're trying to do. Um, the program kind of consists of um, starting out, we'll do Zoom meetings that teach you about We'll have a Zoom meeting on fly time. We'll have a Zoom meeting on uh, fish identification, um, casting, um, insect, aquatic insect identification, and kind of how to uh, better help you fish just because you know about the bugs and what's going on there. Uh, we have a goose chase. If, you're, if you guys are familiar with goose chase, uh, we'll have prizes. Um, and the goose chase is a thing where you go onto your phone and do a little missions, uh, answer little questions, watch videos, answer questions. And at the end, uh, the goose chase actually starts now until September 10th, which is our end of the year state fly fishing club contest. And at that contest, we will have uh, flies that we'll talk to you about today, um, what, what you can practice until then. We'll have casting, uh, accuracy casting, and also uh, distance casting. So that'll be a lot of fun. Then we'll have a fish identification uh, and fish and aquatic in insect identification on the test. And then we'll have talk uh, things about uh, basic fly fishing knowledge and then water quality. Um, and I want to introduce everybody to our kind of our team. I think we're missing one. I'm not sure where she's at, but she'll probably be on the next one. <laughs> um, but we have uh, David Wood. David, where or what county are you from? Uh, Salt Lake County, outdoor program coordinator for okay. Parks and Rec. Okay. And David's going to talk a little bit. I'll introduce everybody and then tell them what they're going to talk about. Uh, so we got David, um, and he, you did a, uh, did you do your master's on a fly fishing? Is that what you said? Yeah, so I did my uh, master's degree in outdoor program uh, management. Oh. And for my master's project, I actually did a youth fly fishing camp. Oh, nice. So he's yeah. got a lot of, he, and he's a fellow fly fisherman. So, uh, and then we have uh, Steve Price, and I'm not sure where you're from. Well, you're from Price, but... <laughs> <laughs> yep, Carbon County on the east side of the state. So prices are prices where I live. Steve Price and Price. So you own that. You own that town, and you're. I good act like it. <laughs> yeah. Well, as long as you act like it. No. <laughs> so we have a, 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 a very avid fly fisherman, and and where did you study your? You did a in, aquatic insect study on in courses, or how did you? Yes. So my background. Um, so I'm an entomologist by training. Um, a, a large amount of my research as an undergraduate was in aquatic invertebrates. I was studying um, aquatic invertebrates, um, identification and, and GIS mapping. So we actually have some of the, the first lists of Cedar Breaks National Monument for their uh, species assemblages there. That's part of what I was doing. Um, then I moved on to studying bugs on plants. Um, but yeah, I, I've been fly fishing for a really long time, fly fishing, uh, or fly tying for slightly less time, but, um, well <laughs> yeah, over 15 years. They kind of go hand in hand. I think after, when you start getting into it, you don't want to pay $2 a bug or a fly. So absolutely. Well, well, but, and then Dave, how long have you been fly fishing just to add that? Uh, I've been fly fishing since I was about 10 or 11 years old. My dad oh, and brother used to drag me out to the river, and then I just kind of fell in love with it. And yeah. Actually spent a couple seasons as a fly fishing guide locally here oh. in Utah. So They drag you out the first time, and then you drag them out the, the, the rest of the time. <laughs> yep, still dragging them out today. <laughs> that's, what, that's what usually happens. So, but yeah, I think we've got a pretty good team. And then I, Christy uh, Jessen, is it Jessen? I think that's right. Um, she's uh, our other member, and I think, um, I'm not sure if she fly fishes, but her husband does a lot, and so she's real, very well versed in, in wanting to help kids learn to do it. It's a great sport uh, to learn. You can do it on your own. Uh, you can cast 
on your background in your backyard just practice that's what I started doing just I think I started when I was a sophomore in high school my uh, brother-in-law gave me a fly tying kit and I, I kind of went crazy with it and ended up being a guide up in Montana for about six years sold high drift boats for about seven years um, tied flies for a, a work a job through going to Utah State I uh, got about 10 15 dollars an hour just monotonous work but it, it was fun <laughs> but it was good to, to learn but but we'll go ahead and start. So this, uh, so our program, we're gonna have uh, Dave and Steve talk a little bit about their little sections, and then they're gonna talk, uh, and then we'll kind of round it up at the end and talk about uh, this first class or Zoom class about um, time flies and kind of what what we're gonna be doing for for our program throughout the whole year. So Dave, let's have you talk about the uh, the camp and what else did we have you? Um, oh yeah, fish identification. So go ahead and just do that and we'll we'll ask questions if we if we have some all right yeah so i'm going to be teaching a bit about um some of the local fish and trout that you're likely to encounter on some of your own fishing adventures um, we'll also be learning about some basic ways to distinguish between those fish and trout um, some of the characteristics and physical features that help you identify the different kind of trout you will come across while you're fishing um, we'll also learn a bit about some of the other wildlife you may see around lakes or rivers while you're out fishing, um, separate from the fish that you're hopefully catching. Um, in addition to our Zoom meetings, uh, we are planning a camp, a fly fishing camp that'll take place somewhere around June 21st. Um, the idea behind that is that we could all meet at a campground, hopefully near a lake or a river, have a nice cookout that night, kind of get to know each other. And then the next day, we'll kind of put together all the skills we've learned thus far, um, do some casting, and hopefully get some people into some fish, do some actual fishing. Yeah, and then we, we're not sure of the date. Uh, what we're going to do is see how many people sign up. And then if we have a lot of northern people, you know, if we have a majority or central or southern, then we'll kind of uh, find out where we could go the closest to that bigger group, I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll kind of determine where we have the larger population of participants and try and find somewhat of a central location that we can all meet and camp and have a good fishing experience. Yeah, and that, that'll be in July, is that right? Or sometime in July? Yeah, sometime in July. I think we're looking at uh, later July at this point. Okay, all right. But we'll share that information as we get that all solidified. Okay, yeah, and you'll, um, and so uh, I think, I'm not sure when our, your meeting is, that's probably, I don't have them right in front, but I think we have, is it the third one or? I think it's the third one, June 9th, I believe. Okay. And we'll let, and we'll have it on, on the video. We'll have it below on all the meetings on this one. So we'll have the next meetings and what they are. And so you can uh, remember if you watch this video. So I think that'll be big. Okay. So, and what we're doing now is just kind of explain the whole program and then we'll talk about the fly time part of it. Cause that's what this main one is, but if Steve, uh, Steve, if we'll have you uh, talk about your section, you have a, uh, you'll have one of the Zoom meetings partially. And so let's have you talk about that and kind of what you're going to be talking about. Yeah, so my section, I'll be talking about the aquatic entomology. So entomology is the study of insects, um, but we'll, we'll be talking about invertebrates in general. So um, Aquatic entomology, I'm not just saying this because I like bugs, <laughs> um, but aquatic invertebrates, aquatic insects are a huge component um, and, and in, in our aquatic ecology. Um, so we have aquatic insects that are uh, consumers, so they're utilizing debris or plant materials and they're transforming that into fish food. Um, we have predators, um, insects that are predators in, in the water. And so they're, they're all kind of part of the aquatic food web. Um, and they, they perform important tasks and, um, in feeding fish and also keeping the riparian biology or the, the aquatic biology of the river and lakes healthy. Um, they support they, they support fish populations. Um, and actually we even use, we even use some of them as aquatic health indicators by knowing what types of bugs we see in the, in the river or in the water. Um, we can actually judge or, or know how much pollution there is or how, um, 
what kind of fish might be there, how healthy the fish are. So they're, they're an important thing to know, um, especially for aquatic biologists, but they also help us as fly fisher, uh, fly fishermen. So um, they, they have some interesting life cycles. Um, some insects live um, on land part of the year, and then they, they are y they're young, live in the water. Um, so by knowing their life cycles and not only the time of year that you're fishing, but also the type of water you're fishing, you can actually get a better guess at what the fish are e eating. So sometimes we call it matching the hatch. So choosing the right pattern to fish with and also the right presentation. By knowing the, the insects that are in the water, you can actually um, improve your fishing to catch more fish um, by knowing those pieces of biology. So we're going to go through that in my section of the, the program um, here in a couple weeks. Um, we're also going to be talking, yeah, so that's kind of what you can look forward to, to joining for my section. Um, we'll also be talking that same night um, Christine, Christine will actually be talking about water quality and water conservation. So obviously, um, if we don't have clean water or we don't have um, water that has good oxygen or um, the right temperatures, fish can't survive. So we're actually going to be talking about um, cleaning wa clean water and what people can what what type of water um, works best for fish and how we as citizens as as sportsmen we can actually help our water resources um, and help improve fishing for for all utahns so chris is actually going to talk to us about some of those those issues when we when we get to that in our um in our program. Do you want me to talk about the goose chase, Blake? Yeah, do you have, do you have, uh, yeah, go ahead and start talking about that and then I'll add some to it, but. Yeah, so um, goose chase, it's a, it's an app on your, on your phone. You download it, um, it's free. And when you go and you're trying to find our specific goose chase, if you enter Utah 4-H fly fishing, you'll be able to find our specific goose chase. And a goose chase, it comes up with different, um, different challenges or targets. So one of them might be uh, take a picture of a mayfly or draw a mayfly. And one might be um, um, a question like, um, how do we tell, uh, identify a, a brook trout or something like that. So it'll all be stuff that we kind of, uh, a lot of it will be stuff that we talk about in our different, different meetings. Um, and some of it will be information that you can go find on your own or through the videos and resources that we give you. And it's just kind of a, a cool competition way for you to kind of study all the different things that we'll be going over. Um, and I, I think there's some prizes too. Is that right, Blake? Yeah, they'll be uh, at the, so it starts now, um, and that'll go, and I don't know if you guys can, that's the goose chase, uh, can you guys see that one, with the little feet, I think the orange feet, that's the goose chase, but uh, people are going on it right now, um, and it'll go clear till September 10th, which is our end of the year contest, and so they'll be at the first place, I think they'll be about 10, 15 levels of, of, get, of prizes, so you know, the first prize, I think we'll get a a whole rod set up with a rail and rod line and everything like that and then maybe a fly tying kit or maybe a chest pack for something or, or anything like that or a net or just something like that so it's, it's a lot of fun but uh, like Steve said uh, as you go through it you learn what uh, fly fishing is you know it talks about you know identification fish identifying fish or insects so it's kind of fun and you can do it not just at a club meeting, but anytime you want, and you can do it as much as you want. So it's, it's a lot of fun that way. So, so that, that'll be a lot of fun. I, um, 
the goose chases are fun once you get into it and kind of figure it out. Uh, there's some competition in there, and a lot of kids, you know, want to be on top, and they work hard to do it. So, <laughs> so it makes it pretty fun. Um, yeah, so I think that will be so. At this, so the different Zoom meetings that we have, um, it'll all accumulate down to the very last meeting, which will be a face to face, which will be the the uh, fly fishing. Uh, Utah fly fishing contest at the very end. It'll be September 10th. It'll be in Logan this year, just because I have a spot and I got it reserved. And then we'll move it every year. I think next year we'll either go uh, Central Utah or Southern Utah, depending on where we can find a spot. But uh, at the at the um, at the contest at the end, we'll have a casting for accuracy. We'll have like hula hoops in the ri river, the stream, and we'll have you a uh, stake where you stand and you can cast. And you get so many points for hitting a fly into that hula hoop. We'll have judges and stuff. And then we'll have fly tying. And we'll talk about fly tying a little bit more uh, at the end of this. Uh, we'll have fish and uh, aquatic insect identification. And then uh, kind of fly fishing knowledge about uh, conservation quality and stuff like that. So there'll be, so it'll be a lot of fun. It's kind of a, in the 4-H we have in, in horse, in horse or junior livestock, they kind of have an end thing, an end contest. And that's what this is going to be. So eventually we want, a lot of kids to do this and then we're going to actually start inviting uh different states if if that gets that big so it'll be pretty fun uh kind of like the western heritage the cowboy shooting that we do we started but we actually go to great falls this year for nationals and so it'll be kind of fun and then we can see you know what state's the best for fly fishing but <laughs> but it's it'll be all fun um but i think um let's see anything else you guys wanted to add before we go into our uh fly time or part on this one so we're we're releasing um, one video a month, right? That goes yeah. over our our topics. Yeah. So what what would you suggest for for youth? Should they just kind of watch it and practice those on their own? Most most of the videos will have supplemental materials and and resources to go through on their own, right? Yeah. So we'll have all the videos. So you can like if somebody came in later, they would just have to catch up. But then they don't have you know we're not having anybody on this on this particular meeting, they can just watch it, uh, kind of see what it's about, and then go from there. This meeting, the first one had a little bit more instruction as far as introduction. Uh, the other meetings will go right into it, uh, into the actual topics that we do. Um, and this first one, I'll, in the link uh, below, I'll have uh, what this meeting is, when's the next meeting, what it's gonna be about, and so on. And so they'll know uh, what, and it'll be on a YouTube uh, site. And I've got, I've got my own, personal site that I put a bunch of things on that might work uh, to, ha to house these on, or, or, I, or I think there's a 4-H one, but we'll see which one is a little bit better to, to get going on that. Let me turn my phone off there. And then um, I think, uh, and then they just watch that and get information. And then you also sign up uh, to be in the group. You can sign up just if you're already 4-H uh, registered for 4-H, you go into your site onto your per profile, go down to clubs, and it'll say Utah, it'll say Utah 4-H State Fly Fishing Club. And then you just click on that. That'll give us your email. Uh, then we'll start emailing all these videos out um, when the next one, reminders, and all kind of stuff like, and all different helps and stuff like that. So that's how you would join this club and then kind of go from there. So at right now we're just starting. And so it's going to be small, but we'll, it'll kind of snowball and get going. We'll get some. Right. That was going to be my one question was how participants register for it, but yeah like, yeah so we'll get on and so if you're registered already you just go on your profile click on a club that you want to enter and then find that one and then hit it so it's it's not an event that you sign up for but it's a club that you sign up for and then then we'll get the information then i'll just get all the emails and we'll have them to be able to get information out so perfect but i think this one so if i uh so this one anything else guys before we move into the fly tying part of it i was just gonna add some some counties might have a uh Oh, yeah. County club, which um, might be fun to get involved in, especially if you're going to be practicing some of the, the skills that you're learning about in the videos. So check that out too. Yeah, and so Cash County's got there. We meet. We met last week. Uh, we had about eight eight people, but at the end of it, they asked, "Could we bring some more people?" I'm gonna go yes. <laughs> and so if if and I'll we'll promote uh, the counties to kind of get uh, clubs if they want to. Um, and kind of help out to kind of facilitate this whole program, but uh, it's you, you, you can do it without the club, but that's kind of what we are based it off, so you can have help, and so that'll be good. So if anything, we'll go in. Let's should we move into the 
this part of the video. Okay. So this one, I'll share my screen. This uh, video uh, we'll talk about, let's see. So I'll do that one. Okay. Let me know if you can see that guys. Is that the list of the flies? So basically uh, David, Steve and I, and Christy came up with a, a, a list of flies. And this is the fly tying Zoom meeting that we're having other than the introduction we just went through. Uh, so what we wanted to do, we wanted to basically find some flies that throughout the year, this program, if you learn to tie, that you'll become very proficient in tying just about any fly. And so if you, if you were to tie on the dry flies up here, uh, we have four flies, elk or caddis, parachute atoms, Chernobyl ant or beetle, and then the stimulator. If you tied, if you could tie those pretty good, you could pretty much tie just about any, any uh, fly that there is in a store, basically, other than maybe with a few different techniques. Same with the nymphs, um, and we'll learn about, you know, dry flies and when to fish them uh, and different things like that. The nymphs is a gold rib hare's ear, copper john, pheasant tail, and the paragon uh, nymph, and it's kind of a new school pattern that's kind of fun. Um, but basically, these four, so eight flies will be at the very end as you practice these flies. And we'll have, uh, so all these, I'll leave this down. Let me look at this other. We'll have a link at the bottom of every one of those flies. So here's one link that you just click on, you know, we'll have it on the, in some of the inf information below, we'll have a link on the elk air caddis. And then you click on that and it'll take you right through and learn how to tie that. Um, and, and then all the other uh, links will be down there. Um, we'll go each one, parachute atoms, all those will be a link under the video so you can go watch those. So keep uh, favorite this uh, video or video when you get it so you can get back to it and then just watch those videos. And so at state contest, we will have, um, I think we're gonna pick two flies out of each of these. So we'll have two dry flies and two nymphs and we'll give you all the materials to tie and all the equipment. And if you have your own equipment, you can bring it. But at the state contest, we'll, I think we'll announce when you get there uh, at the opening meeting, we'll say, okay, we're gonna, the, the flies that we're gonna pick today or tie for the contest is an elk hair caddis um, and a Chernobyl ant, pheasant tail and a copper john. We'll have those four flies. We'll, uh, in the rotation of our, so we'll have tables, we'll have all the materials there. You just come and tie two, I think it's, is it two flies per speed or type of fly, right? So you'll end up tying what, eight flies? Two, four, six, eight. I think that's right. Yeah, so you'll tie eight flies, but we'll, we'll, what we're looking for is uh, similarity between the two, um, you know, head space, uh, gap measurements, kind of proportions. Um, and we'll have, a, we'll have an example there so you can look at, so you're not just tying blind. But we'll get into, we'll be letting you know a little bit more about that, but this is the list of flies that you can start tying. And with the videos that we, give you the links of that you can just look at one and just tie that up you know tie that two or three dozen times and you might have it you know and then just practice throughout the throughout the summer until the, the contest in september and so um let's see anything else on the flies guys as far as did i miss anything I'm trying to think and then uh so just basically uh start with you know one and just practice that um and i was gonna ask dave and steve while i got you here is that um because i know that might be a lot if you if you bought all the products or all the materials for all these flies that might be a little bit of a of a hit for each kid um we kind of talked about this a little bit before is there would we i'm trying to think if we maybe narrowed these flies down to maybe two flies and then had them just tie more or something like that what are you what are you guys thinking or just keep it the way we did and call it good i think it's uh, it's a good program i i think it looks good um the one thing to keep in mind i i think as especially for um parents trying to figure out all of these these materials um, you know, a lot of times, and maybe you'll talk about this a little bit more, Blake, but a lot of times when we talk about fly tying, um, we can get really specific with, 
oh, you need to have um, your your yearling elk needs to be a bleached yearling elk for your your elk hair caddis for this specific thing, or you need to have um, this color of thread. Um, if you're just practicing, the honestly, the fish don't typically care that much. <laughs> so you know you don't have to have um, a specific olive green thread. You know, you could you could use a brown tying thread for pretty much any of these, and it'll work. So just because on the video, um, you know, it says that you need to have a specific type or color of of thread or material, you don't necessarily need to need to have that. Um, also, you know, if you're in one of the counties that have a county club talk to your club leader, they, they probably can, um, they probably have some of those materials or, um, you know, maybe what you can do is split, sp sp split a, a pack of, uh, pheasant tails. So you don't have to buy, um, 20 of them. You could split it out with another club member. Um, yeah, anything I, else to add I, to that guys? I was going to say that. Yeah. You brought that up. That's why we have three minds going. <laughs> Um, so I was going to also on that uh, link below is, is create a list of the basic, basic items that you need for these flies. So, you know, it might be, you might just do a brown thread and that you could tie everything with a brown thread. So you don't have to go buy, like uh, Steve was saying, 20 different colors of thread. You, copper, uh, the Copper John is a, you have a little copper wire that will work for the gold rib hairs there, you know. And so, so stuff like that, uh, the pheasant tail, um, elk hair work for the stimulator and the elk hair caddis. Um, and the, of course the Chernobyl ant is just foam. So it's super, you can buy, you can go buy a whole big pack of foam at Walmart for $4 and you got every flipping color that you need. <laughs> so it, it makes for fun tying, but I'll, uh, I'll have like a materials list of, and the bare minimum of everything. And then like Steve said, it, you don't have to have, it's mainly the, the proportions, the learning how to tie a stack of hair on top without it having to go all over or making a mess or to keep head space so you can tie you know your head on uh without crowding the eye and stuff like that so it's just a matter of technique um you know with the pheasant tail copper john and if you tie enough of them you get better at it and if you if your fly looks like the fly that on the on the video then you you've done you know you got it and then you just have to perfect that so but i think that's super good um and then so with that um i'll share my screen again So with that, uh, we'll go. And then also on the tools, you, you don't need a ton of tools and they're fairly cheap. Um, you can buy, you know, I, I think I've got a pair of scissors that I've just pulled out of the drawer. You know, they kind of have to be a little pointy so you can get close in. But there's uh, some tools, if you guys can see that. There's a bobbin uh, that holds your thread. Um, there's a, a, is this a Martinelli or Martin, Martin, Martinelli? A whip finisher. There's a bunch of different whip finishers. Uh, you can do it. Uh, hackle pliers. And so I think it, on this, let's see. I thought I had another. Um, let me see on the other. So that's the flies. I thought I had another uh, toolkit for a vise. Uh, so a vise to hold your uh, hooks in, um, like this. I can just kind of show you. So here's one. Uh, the better, the, the little bit more money you spend on a vise, the little bit better, it'll be easier easier to tie fly or tie on uh, with the, you know, the, if you get a $5 vise, it's not gonna hold too good. <laughs> but I think you can get a pretty good vise for, you know, $20, $30 for a, as a kit, you know, and then as you like it and kind of get a little bit better, you'll probably want to upgrade, but you don't need to, the, to buy, you know, the top of the line right off the bat until you decide what you want to and And I think with Dave and Steve, once you start doing it, it it's it gets a little bit addictive <laughs> and then you know you can you can uh, tie your own flies it's a lot of fun to tie that and then go out and catch a fish with it you know and so but uh different different um kits on amazon um are super cheap uh like a 60 dollar will get you almost there's one of them on amazon there's it had all the kit and plus a bunch of different hair feathers hooks you know all in one thing so it made it pretty nice that way 
Um, yeah, Blake, they also have kits that come with the vice, like you were saying, comes with oh, yeah. the vice, all the tools, and then kind of a beginner kit with some feathers, thread, yeah. and that's how I got started. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's with a that's, kit like that. Yeah, that's the way, because they come with hooks and everything, and then you don't yep. have to go yeah, exactly. individually and pick them off, you know, sportsman's or whatever to try to get, know what you want. If you get the whole thing, if they give you a kit, you're going to be able to, and they probably come with a book too. Yep, or, or yeah, they usually do, yep. Yeah, so that's awesome. But I think, um, so basically in this class, as far as uh, tying flies, uh, we just want kids to learn to tie their own flies. And what, how we do that is watch the videos, get some materials. Um, and I, if you, uh, I probably have a bunch of materials for the, from the state. So if, if the different counties need some, I can make a box, like a little kit box and send it to that county so they can kind of start, especially for like woolly buggers and stuff like that. I've got, you know, you can do a, a egg a sucking leech type woolly bugger or i've got a bunch of uh all that stuff a lot of marabou a ton of it um and a lot of hackle so if any county wants um kind of a kit uh just holler at me and then i'll just get them a box and send it right to them and they can disperse it for the kids because it's it's a lot so we might as well use that and then um i've got kits here uh that we use for state when i do my state kind of activities but it's, uh, uh, and some of the counties may even buy a four or five kits for their county and then they can just uh, loan them out like on the, on the, like we loan a lot of stuff out anyway for the 4-H kids. So, but I think, so learning to tie the flies uh, properly and then uh, we'll kind of touch on that a little bit. We'll maybe do some other videos to kind of show you some techniques on that. And then we'll go through the year. And then at fish camp, we might do a little bit to kind of show you if we do that and then also at the the state contest will you'll be kind of ready if you practice a lot and then we'll just say hey tie two of these and two of these and two of these and two of these and then uh, we'll see how you do and it'll be against you know you'll be up against uh, in your category so you know uh, the junior intermediate and senior will be against each other so you won't be tying you know a, a nine-year-old won't be tying against a 17-year-old or something so but you never know this nine-year-old sometimes might, might tie a lot better so it just depends on how much you practice um let's see let me anything else guys on that as far as so the video is something that they can watch and learn and find out where the links are to watch those flies and the list of flies and so i think um let's see anything else on that that we covered about the flies i, I just mentioned um you know if if you're if you're new to all this, it can be a little bit intimidating, especially when you go to your your favorite big box outdoor store. Uh, if you're running the questions on material selection or or anything like that, feel free to reach out to 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 Blake or David or one of us, and and we can we can help talk you through some of those choices if you run into some some questions and like Blake said even the state 4-H office has some of those that we can uh we might even be able to send you to, to tie with so yeah uh, oh go ahead I, I would also just add as you're as you're working your way through learning these new flies and maybe this is brand new to you um be patient with it it's not going to be perfect the first time and this is something that does take practice so have fun with it, get creative, and have a little bit of patience with it because it's a great activity to get into. Yeah, and we see, Christy, we saw you join right there, so <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> I don't know if you have audio or not. <laughs> I do. Sorry oh. about that. I oh, uh, <laughs> thought we were starting at three. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> not two. Oh, that's all right. Um, we <laughs> kind of went over, and Christy, what did you have as far as, we talked a tiny bit about uh, just that we're going to do water quality and conservation, but what do you have as far as that little section you can you can kind of talk about? Um, uh, do you want me to do it right now? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Clean, uh, clean. Why is clean water important? That's one of the things that uh, we want to go over as far as the health of the community, the health of uh, the streams and the lakes, and. Um, uh, we need to protect about 60% of the nation's streams and millions of acres of wetlands that have, um, have been um, 
uh, polluted or have had some sort of issue with them in the past. Um, we want to uh, go over some rules and, of why farming and ranching uh, can either be a good thing or a bad thing as far as clean water. Um, the, the pesticides that are being used, as long as they're used correctly, um, is okay, but it can become an issue, um, especially in our streams. Um, so there's uh, several ways that we can protect our local watersheds. And one of them is uh, we don't medicate our streams. In other words, we're not putting medications down our, um, our water systems uh, because it can go end up downstream. And um, so we keep those and, and handle them correctly. Uh, uh, stormwater can carry debris and pollutants, so if um, the watersheds do not have um, uh, foliage and um, uh, along the banks of the rivers, then um, a lot of times our waterways become polluted with debris and um, sediment, and so that's a problem. Uh, we want to decrease water consumption um, in our own uh, homes in, in uh, uh, watering our yards and things like that um, so that it, we want to slow the flow. Um, we also want to plant trees along the banks um, and also uh, take care of uh, plants, uh, native plants that grow along the stream banks and keep that involved and, and again that's kind of going over uh, uh, what we're talking about, uh, the debris and the sediment in our, in our streams and, and lakes. Uh, we don't, we want to make sure we leave no trace, um, pack it in, pack it out. Um, the, the, uh, the litter, the pollution um, can become a problem along the stream banks. Um, so we always make sure we take it out with us. Um, we want to, in the larger cities, we want to make sure that we're protecting anything that's going into the storm drains. Anything um, that comes, uh, that ends up in the storm drains ends up downstream and that's uh, again a problem. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're not dumping oil or anything down the um, storm drains. And also um, we wanna make sure that uh, if we're washing the car or we're washing the dog or anything like that, we're doing it on land that is, um, uh, that will absorb that water and um, filter out any pollutants that could end up in the, um, in the stream or the river. Um, and then the final one is don't move the plants and animals. Um, uh, we have a situation in Utah where um, the invasive mussels and things like that, quag, quagga mussels and the, I, I'm, I'm not saying them correctly, mm -hmm. are being moved from stream to stream and lake to lake. And um, so we have to make sure that when we are um, coming out of the water with a boat or a jet ski or anything like that, that we look and check for those mussels so that we don't end up move, polluting another waterway. Um, so that's, it, it's an invasive species and it's taking over our water systems. So that's one of the things that we need to really watch for. And I know some of these are um, personal as far as our yards and, and putting um, uh, different uh, uh, pesticides and things like that on our grasses and things like that. But every, every one of these, um, ways to protect our waterways is um, is very important to the streams and the water systems downstream from us and and that affects our our um, our fish and wildlife and any aqua uh, marine life that uh, is trying to reside in our lakes um, right now in the past we've had um, algae bloom and that is directly related to um, the uh, the uh, pesticides and the and the um, um, 
the things that we're putting on our yards um, and it gets washed down into our, our lakes. And uh, in Utah, um, Utah Lake is actually one of the worst. And we've had indicators in Southern Utah. And when the water gets warm, um, it, it blooms and it grows rapidly within our water system. So, so the, all of those things affect our fishing and um, our recreation uh, in Utah. So um, just wanted to touch on a few of those to make sure that we were uh, discussing things that ways that we can um, take care of our watersheds and make sure that we're not uh, polluting. Yeah. That's a, so being a fly fisherman, I get, you know, any type of fisherman, um, like you said, you can actually help the water, uh, like the watershed, not just at, while you're at the river, you know, huh. you can be, you know, you can kind of be aware of what you're doing on your farm or grass or anything like that. So that's kind of, so a yes. lot of kids probably don't understand that. They're like, well, I don't care about what I do here because the river's three miles away, you know, or something. And it's clean up river. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so so it's um so it's very important in this class we want to educate not just fly fishing but we want to educate what keeps fly fishing going and you know like uh, Steve talked about uh, you can tell you know the aquatics uh, about the insects and if it's po not poison but good water or, or bad water qual or quality of water depending mm -hmm. on the insect so kind of an indicator so but that's yes. that's huge and so and we'll have uh, we talked about. Um, We'll have that other, our other, one of our other meetings that will kind of go uh, more into what you talked about, but maybe examples of what they can do, uh, you know, handouts or links or something like that, maybe something to watch on yes. a video or something that we can, and then educate them on that. So then they, you know, we're just kind of giving a brief, uh, a brief information now, but then we can give them more in-depth stuff to kind of learn about it. And then, then they can have their their fly fishing, maybe their kids now fly fishing, learning, but then they want their kids to fly fish. But if, it, if the water's bad, you know, we may have to do yes. some virtual fly fishing. That's not very fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, yeah, sorry about our, I, I don't know if I put three o'clock on that or something, but that's all right. <laughs> we well, we kind of we went every, through everything and we just touched on yours, Christy, but I'm glad you went over that because that gives them a little bit uh, kind of what we're looking forward to in our next meetings. Um, and then we talked about the, the fly tie, uh, tying flies and what they needed to do to kind of practice it, but then we'll give them, uh, to sign up and then we'll give them information along the way so we can help them out. And so, but I think anything else, um, we, we went over some of the, uh, tools that they need. I'm going to get a list of flies, list of materials for the flies, list of tools uh, that they need, just basic and kind of we talked about and when's our next meeting i don't have my i don't know if anybody has i know it's next month but let's see if i could may. it is on the 18th okay 18th and we'll have uh does it what does it have a time on there christy what we know <laughs> <laughs> that was my problem okay. we'll do do is two o'clock good for everybody that works okay <laughs> that'll work yeah, we're, especially we're, if I write it down. <laughs> hey, I I did that. I did that. Uh, I get on the next day and nobody's on there. I'm like, oh, it was yesterday. Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> right. But we'll go ahead and I think that'll be everything for this uh, this meeting. I'll go ahead and put this on a the YouTube thing, and then I'll give the link to you guys, and then we'll start promoting. Uh, Megan has all the stuff for the promotion kit, and then we can start you know pumping this out and getting the kids kids right on it and then we did talk about the goose chase a little bit um and how that works and but that there's already my my club that we have there's about five kids that are already on the goose chase starting so there that's uh, i think it'll kind of snowball after kids get onto that so but other than that anything else david that you had or steve or no i think that all sounds good and like i say, this video just to be for uh for kids to get on and learn about the program and then kind of go from there this one kind of more informed informational one but next one will be like on topic kind of all the way through so and then we'll uh uh we'll have a meeting uh, all four of us before our next meeting just to, so we know what's uh what that one is about and kind of how we're gonna do it just kind of like what we did this time so okay okay well all righty well thanks okay. guys um and we'll probably end it here but then we'll i'll get in touch with you a little bit later then 
All right. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.